everybody needs a friend. And plants are no different. So in this video, we're gonna give you Companion Planting 101, including two or three plants to plant with the top 10 most popular veggies in your garden. Companion planting is exactly what it sounds like. It is the practice of planting two specific types of plants together for the purpose of giving one of them, or sometimes even both, some kind of benefit. So let's take a look at my first pick, which would be pepper. Super popular plant. I grow at least 20 varieties a year, sometimes up to 60 varieties. And every year I plant them with a few friends. My first pick for you guys would be the eggplant. It's actually related to the pepper, but it can take a little bit more heat. It's a big bush, a little bit bushier, nice leaves on it. And it tends to shade out the peppers just a touch because the peppers prefer a lot of light and heat, but there is such a thing as too much. Over about 85, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, they start to suffer and they can even have lowered production. So if you plant eggplant at an angle that kind of blocks a little bit of that afternoon sun from your peppers, you're gonna have a really good time. They're gonna get a little bit of that natural shade and you'll still have a nice eggplant harvest as well. My second companion for peppers, it's a little bit basic, but sometimes basic is good. And I'm talking about basil. It's going to give a little bit of ground cover to the plant. It's pretty much wants the exact same things that pepper wants. So you don't have to worry about soil conditions whatsoever. And there's so many use cases for peppers and basil in the kitchen that it's nice to have them in the same place. Much like a best friend, I do have my best favorite plant in the garden and that is tomatoes. They taste so much better when you grow them at home. And there's a variety of different companions that go well with them. A classic one is right here, which is basil because it tastes so good when you eat it together with a fresh tomato that it just makes sense to put it right next to it. It can deter some pests, which is also a nice bonus. But for deterring pests, I always go with the French marigold. The French marigold produces some sort of aroma in its roots that help drive away root knot nematodes, which are a classic pest that hide underground and destroy your harvest. So this year, I'm planting all my tomatoes with French marigolds, but I also have something else I like to do, which is maybe more of a not so much a companion for the tomato, but a companion for the other plant, which is lettuce. Lettuce is wonderful planted right in the shadow behind your tomato plants because it's not going to outcompete your tomatoes and the shade that your tomato provides will lead to a healthier, more delicious lettuce crop, even in the heat of summer. So not only can you harvest your own seasoning for your tomatoes, but you can also make a complete salad by having some lettuce growing right behind it. Every season, I have cucumbers in my garden. This season, I'm growing them up one of our tall A-frame trellises, but what if there was a companion that could do that for you? This is kind of an unusual one, but let's talk about cucumbers for a second. One of the problems you'll run into is the aptly named cucumber beetle, which can totally decimate your plant. There's also some wilting diseases that can affect cucumbers. So something you can do if you don't have a trellis is actually just plant corn. You'll let that corn grow up just a touch and much like a classic three sisters garden, which would be corn, beans and squash what you can do is let the corn grow plant the cucumbers right next to it they'll use the corn stalks as a trellis of sorts where wrapping their tendrils around kind of climbing up and it can help protect against both the cucumber beetle and different wilting diseases that cucumbers can suffer from now there's also a weird combo that works specifically for cucumber beetles which would be buckwheat and or radishes. If you want to keep it simple, I might throw some radishes kind of just around this planting right here, maybe on the back side, maybe in the middle here, but you can also combine the buckwheat and the radish to create a pretty powerful cucumber beetle prevention companion planting combo. A while back, Kevin and I planted a corn maze, or at least attempted to plant a corn maze in this very spot. The one thing we didn't take into account are companion plants with those corn. So Kevin did mention a weird sort of sister in the Three Sisters where you can grow cucumber with corn and that totally works. The Three Sisters is just a format. It's not necessarily only certain plants, but if you did want to choose the most efficient, I've been growing my corn with companions in the Three Sisters garden for many years now. And the traditional way are beans to fix nitrogen and also climb up your corn. So in this case, the corn is a companion to your bean and also squash to grow alongside, sprawl underneath your corn, provide natural mulch, and also just shade the entire area while providing you a secondary harvest of delicious squash. My favorite is also to actually grow amaranth around it as a little bonus pick because it doesn't take up any space, it doesn't compete with the corn, and you get a wonderful harvest of amaranth. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. The more you toot, the better you feel, so eat some beans with every meal. Beans are a staple crop, absolutely staple crop in my garden, pole beans and bush beans. But in this particular tip, I'm gonna be talking about bush beans. So I have a little smattering of beans in my garden. I, I haven't quite put in my crop this year. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna try planting with one of my other favorite crops, which would be 
potatoes. Now, both of these crops have a beetle associated with them that likes to eat that crop. So you have the Mexican bean beetle for beans, and then you have the Colorado potato beetle for potatoes. Funnily enough, planting them both together helps each repel the pest that is attracted to it. So it's kind of a funny example of a vice versa companion planting technique where each plant confers a benefit to the other one. Now, beans have another companion plant that is actually a flower. It's not the zinnias that you see here, although they're fine. It is actually the cosmos. Cosmos attracts a ton of lady beetles or lady bugs, which are the main predator of the Mexican bean beetle. So you can start to see how, if you understand how the ecosystem plays together, what plants attract what, and if that thing eats the thing that you're trying to prevent, then that is a perfect example of a companion plant. Every year we hear about the same pest from you guys, and it is something that fortunately we don't have, but it's something that will destroy your squash plant. It's going to eat the leaves, get into your stem, and destroy the plant before it even produces that massive bounty of squash that you then have to figure out how to get rid of at the end of the season. And that is, of course, the squash beetle and the squash vine borer. Now, for the beetle, there are plants that can help deter them, keep them away from your squash in the first place. And those companions are nasturtiums, marigolds, bee balm, catnip. They could all be sort of companion planted all around your squash. Wherever you have it growing, they won't outcompete it, especially something like squash, which is very vigorous. They'll add a little bit of beauty, and hopefully that aroma from all of those flowers will help deter that squash beetle from ever moving in in the first place and destroying your harvest. I come to you today sandwiched between brassicas. Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli. They're really all the same species, brassica, oleraceae. There are so many different companion plants that you can put with these bad boys and you need them because frankly, I struggle to grow these in my climate. They get hit with aphids, they get hit with cabbage worms, they get hit with honestly, sometimes a plane. I don't know, something always wants to ruin these. So here are some companion plants that you can add. One of my favorites this year is actually onions. Have this little guy right here. It's a nice little cooking onion. The neck's broken already, ready to harvest, ready to throw on the grill. But this can help deter aphids. Cabbage aphids, one of the things that destroys your Brussels sprouts, your cabbage, the absolute most. You can put some sage and thyme and oregano in here. That'll help prevent diamondback moths, which can be quite annoying. And then also dill. I find that a garden can never have enough dill. If you like that flavor, you'll always run out of it. Every time I come out here, I'm like, where is my dill? When did I use it and why don't I have more? So plant it here and it will not only help deter some of the more common pests that your brassicas might suffer from, but it also attracts what are called parasitoid wasps or wasps that can sort of feed on a pest in your garden. We see this really often with the tomato hornworm and the braconid wasp, which will lay those weird eggs in the back of the hornworm. It looks like an alien. It happens in other areas too though. So throw some dill in here, throw some onions in here. Honestly, onion's probably my favorite one because there's nothing more satisfying than just coming out, popping out a little cooking onion and throwing it into the kitchen. So these are some of our favorite picks for brassicas. Now let's get a little bit more interesting, a little bit more weird. We're going to be blending two plants together because they are a match made in heaven. I am talking, of course, about the oh, fresh soil grown carrot here. Absolute delicious treat and lettuce. These two plants are a match made in heaven because the tall fronds of the carrot will shade out your lettuce, stop it from bolting, make it taste a little bit better. And the beauty is that the lettuce doesn't have deep roots. There are shallow surface roots that don't compete with the carrot, which is a tap root that goes straight down. So by planting them next to each other, you get the benefits of not competing for resources and water, and you also get the shade from one benefiting the other. The lettuce growth on top will also help keep the soil a little bit cooler overall, leading to a tastier carrot harvest. But if you do have a carrot fly, which is a horrible pest for carrots, then you might wanna plant your carrots next to aromatic plants like sage and rosemary, which help deter those flies. But me personally, I'm going to be doing rows of lettuce and carrots side by side from here on out. My next pick is not the chamomile in the foreground of the shot. In fact, it's what I'm surrounded by right here. Potatoes, my spirit plant, my soul plant, what I actually might be when I come back in the next life. So we need to talk about the biggest pest that affects potatoes. It's the potato beetle. And we talked about how adding beans can help deter while also helping the beans deter their own version of a beetle that attacks them, the Mexican bean beetle. But there are some other plants that will help a lot here. Some of these are a little bit experimental. I haven't even tried these ones out myself quite yet, but some studies do suggest that they have some benefits. So horseradish can help prevent Potato beetles, I haven't tried it. You wanna be planting it on the border. So I might be throwing one here, here, right about where I'm standing, right over there. You can also throw garlic in with your potatoes. If you were to do this, I would make sure that my garlic had at least four to six inches of space around it because garlic 
as an allium doesn't really want to share its roots with too many other plants. It needs a lot of nutrition to create that big juicy garlic bulb. And then another thing that can help with just the potato beetle itself is throwing some marigolds in here. But it seems like marigolds are kind of a companion plant to everything in the garden. Now I have a pick that I did that I think is a sleeper hit for potatoes. Now think about it. You bury potatoes, let's say you have a raised bed. You bury your potatoes in the raised bed six inches deep. They take a couple weeks to start sprouting. They take a little bit more to grow up. It takes even more time for this beautiful foliage to come up. Well, what can you do on top of the raised bed? I like to grow some quick growing crops. I call this the subterranean method. I throw my potatoes in and then I throw some radish or I throw some lettuce or I throw some quick growing root crops on top of those buried potatoes. And by the time that they come up and really start to form, I harvest out that lettuce and that radish. And that's kind of like a bit of a staggered planting method, not so much a companion plant. It doesn't really give a benefit to the potato, but it gives a benefit to you as the gardener. So companion planting, it's almost like the sky is the limit. Your imagination is what will limit you from finding some beautiful combinations in the garden. If you wanna know exactly why companion planting works, the science behind the magic, check this video out right here. Until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.